less camaraderie than there used to be. Um, so um, the the basement scenes were very. Um, there was a lot of them. It was probably forty five minutes of the movie, and now it's down to about half an hour. And that's the movie is better because of it because it was just it just stopped when we did that. Um, so um, there's less of it than there used to be. There's there's some good stuff that was cut, but it hurt the pacing too much. Um, I'm picturing in my mind like a uh, a mashup, sort of a Virginia Wolf and District Nine kind of mashup. <laughs> I think it's just better because the movie, movie is so often goofy. Is Shaun of the Dead, yeah. Dead Alive, the pre- or Brain Dead, the Peter Jackson movie, uh, and the Crazies, either version. Um, so what yeah. what happens for you? Uh, oh, you're Paprika. a film, Paprika. yeah, Paprika. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, what's your question about that? No, no, I'm just uh, babbling on about myself again. I tend to do that. Um, <laughs> so as a, as a, now you're a filmmaker. Um, what's next for, for you? Do you have another project on the go or is it? Well, you're still... you can shoot anything now, but um, I, I have a script that I want to shoot, but um, you know, you, you can't get anyone in the same room. You can't just, you know, you can't get anything insured. You can't. Yeah, I guess so. I never thought It'll of that. It'll be a long time before I could shoot it. And then the concern is that it, it, it takes place basically in 2018. And do you have to acknowledge um, uh, the coronavirus? Do you have to integrate the thing? Is it going to be like, how can you not talk about that? How can you not deal with this major issue? But, you know, the movie deals with other issues that, that uh, you know, were relevant then, but maybe may seem quaint now. Who knows? Um, yeah. So I, it's a, it's a sort of a mix of Oleana and old boy to, about a, a guy who um, gets kidnapped by his uh, ex's brother who's going to punish him and puts him in a basement. Um, and it's uh, basically three characters in a room screaming at each other. Um, uh, but um, when I'm able to shoot it, I, I don't know. I mean, this is another one of those things where um, I was concerned about the wrong audience taking the wrong <laughs> messages from it. But I guess, again, you can't control that. You know, yeah, you don't. Uh-huh. You can control how someone's going to read into it. And and um, I guess the only thing you can hope for is, uh, is, you know, is anyone even to care? Like, can you can you muster up enough energy for to make somebody care? I mean, someone when I was talking about this second script, they said, hey, why would you want to make that? What's your point? And I said, I like making people uncomfortable. And he said, is that a reason to make a movie? And I said, I guess it is for me. Um, well, it should be unless you're doing it like. uh, uh Cronenberg style or something, which is just, um, I genuinely like things that make people uncomfortable. I also really like unhappy endings. They're my right. favorite. Like, uh, Dancer in the Dark is probably my all time favorite movie right now. It has been for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's so tragic and it, there's never a happy point. And I just well, love that about it. Manipulative because they, it's just a lot of, it's it's a it's the standard Lars von Trier. I'm gonna make you feel bad about being the only audience who put up with me in the first place. Like all the Fair von Trier movies after the after breaking the waves seem to be just basically I'm gonna punish the only middle brow audience who likes these kind of movies by rubbing <laughs> your nose in it and making you feel bad for this entertainment. Uh, uh, Michael Haneke does the same thing. Um, yeah, uh, with funny games that may be the ultimate in that um, either version that you see. Um, and I was, I'm sort of amused by uh, Von Trier, what he does, in which he is so self-indulgent and so deliberately alienating for what I can tell it, it seems like almost parody, but is not supposed to be a joke. Um, Fair enough. So, I, uh, uh, sorry, Gord, I, I know you're, you're, uh, you're sitting in silence there. Um, I've just, I've never, I, I've never heard of Dancer in the Dark and I'm just looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, Bjork. Bjork. It stars Bjork. Yeah, and the soundtrack is Bjork and Tom York. It's an amazing soundtrack. Um, I actually had this. Uh, I heard the soundtrack before I saw the movie, and that made me want to see it. And I was glad I did. Um, where was? You should, watch, was I should watch Breaking the Waves. It's very similar. He made it about four years before with Emily oh, okay. Watson. I'm a big fan of the Downers. Uh, Roger Nygaard, 
he was the last uh, film guy we had on here. You know what's funny? I interviewed Roger Nygaard 10 years ago on my podcast. Really? Yeah, yeah when he was promoting The Nature of Existence. Very good guy. I liked awesome. him a lot. He's a great guy. Um, really fun guy to talk to. Um, so, sorry, I just babble on about my influences. What's, uh, let's see, where was I? I've lost it now. So, I was asking about your next project. You can't do one. What do, what do people do right now then? Is it just is it just a hiatus for the entire industry? Yeah, I mean, I have a regular job, so it doesn't ah, change enough. that. But um, yeah, that's how I financed the movie was was the regular job. But um, yeah, I, I people are just sitting around. I mean, you yeah. know, the actors' unions are are waiting for the uh, okay to go back to work, but they can't quite agree on how any of it would work. So you can't get close to anybody and. You know, what do you do if uh, uh, somebody gets infected? Are they fired? What do you do then? Yeah, I guess. Um, I, I'm, it's an 89% recovery rate. I think everybody should go back to work. I mean, that's um, not a very good recovery rate. <laughs> no. Um, on, on a it's totally different bad. subject, I, I wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, is when back in the day... I guess the, the the studio that took chances was Lionsgate. Is there one now that uh, is willing to take chances anymore, or is everything just going to be it's remakes and it's oh okay? Yeah, they, they they put out a great slate of movies pretty much every year. I mean, Neon picked up Parasite in the U.S., but that they're kind of small. Um, but A twenty four has been doing is basically the Miramax of now. Um, I see. I swore off movies years ago. I haven't watched a single one. The last new film I watched was uh, 21 Jump Street. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I just I was just done with the industry just because everything at the time was a remake or a sequel, and I just I couldn't deal with it. I think yeah, last uh, the year, karate. Last year, A24 karate. put out uh, Uncut Gems, oh, Waves, The Lighthouse, uh, The Farewell. Oh, okay. Midsomar, Last Black Man in San Francisco, Under the Silver Lake. Wow. Um, I've heard, I've heard of Climax, just, which is I, a Jasper Noe film. Um, cool. 2018, uh, Eighth Grade, which was great. Hereditary, also very good. Uh, First Reformed, Last Movie Star. I don't know. None, none of those sound like a comic book movie. Yep, none that's of them not... are. <laughs> the Disaster Artist, Lady Bird, Killing of a Sacred Deer. Now, that's a great filmmaker, the guy who made that. Um, wow. but Yorgos Lanthimos, who made um, The Lobster and um, oh, okay. The Favorite and um, um, uh, the one I love, Dogtooth, um, about the, um, the family that uh, uh, can basically isolates their own kids. And so they just teach their kids alternate words for things so they can never experience the outside world. Oh, wow. It's Ooh. great. What's it's it very, called? Very, dog uh, face? Dog, Dogtooth. Dog it's too. a very. I love dark comedies, and that's one of the darkest. Yeah. Um, so do I. So, yeah. So anytime anybody like makes a phone call, they'll use alternate words, so they they have no instinct to go to the outside world and experience any of it. Um. So yeah, yeah it's 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 great. Very neat. Uh, um, what's what's one movie, movie that's the Lobster is? I also like that one a lot. You might have, that with Colin Farrell. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard great things for it. And I'm not a big Colin Farrell fan, but... Well, I he's playing don't... kind of someone uh, dumpy in it. I mean, the, the premise is that, you, that you, um, you are forced to find someone to fall in love with in this futuristic version of society. And if you do not, find, if you do not fall in love with the person who you are assigned to within your group, then you will be turned into an animal of your choice. Oh, uh, nice. very cool. Gord, you can get in on this one. I want to. I want to know. I'm very curious for you too. What's mm. one movie in? We could go all time. One movie that's just really disappointed you. Oh wow. Oh man. Um, there actually was. Uh, oh, <laughs> American Ninja Part Two. That movie broke my heart. <laughs> Steve James stole that one, and he's a good part of those movies. I was such a fanatic. I loved the first one so much, and I saw the second one, and I almost wept. I was just like, oh, this is just not what I wanted at all. (laughs) 
I was yeah. really yeah. sad by the second one. I, I, I have James um, not in the third one, right? Is that when he dies? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's the only thing I like in the first one. So, <laughs> just, like the second one, doesn't it deliver exactly what the first one does, which is basically repeating it? Yeah, and that's why. Like, I was just hoping for just, just something slightly different, but there was literally no difference. It was just watching the same <laughs> movie just set on a slightly different backdrop. It was just oh, sure, but, I was so sad. Uh, all those canon movies, they, I mean, that's where those Ninja movies, you know, American versions anyway, come from, like Enter the Ninja. Yeah. And then the sequel oh, yeah. was that um, Revenge of the Ninja, and then and then the one that everyone enjoys, because it's ridiculous, Ninja 3, The Domination. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mix of, like, Breakin' and The Exorcist and a Ninja movie. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's stupid, but it's a lot yeah. of fun. Very stupid. I actually spent the better part of 10 years trying to find American Ninja on DVD. Uh, okay. It took forever. I I couldn't get it on. I couldn't. I mean, this is like I started searching before Amazon was a thing and just couldn't find it anywhere. And finally, once Amazon existed, I'm like, I looked it up one day. I'm like, fuck, it's there. So I, I bought it. And I was you and the dumb thing to- was, do you want to know how much it cost me to buy it? Not on Blu-ray. On basic DVD, it cost me forty four fucking dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think Jesus it was on, it was it was in America in like region one full frame, I think, for yeah. men, for many years. Yep. And I think it was probably available overseas. Like you never got like a region free player when that no. was a thing. Yeah, no, I didn't have no mine was very specific for North America only. So oh, I, was, I, I was early on the on the PAL and in you know and region two <laughs> players because I knew there were so many movies. See, I paid a ridiculous amount. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Early. I'm bad for that. I paid a ridiculous amount for SFW. I think it was about that much for the DVD just a few years ago, actually. Um, yes, which I think, oh, if, yeah. if no one's yeah, seen, yeah. it's the quintessential 90s movie, I think. Just oh, I saw the points theater. out everything. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in the theater. I have a list. <laughs> really? You didn't? I thought it was hilarious. I just enjoyed it. What's what's one for you, Adam? Is is there a movie that just uh, you... the most disappointing movie I've ever seen is probably Alien Resurrection. Oh, oh, yeah. that's a good choice because um, that was made by Jean Pierre Junot, Junet, who made The City of Lost Children, which is one of my favorite movies, and he made he also made Amelie right. later, um, and he made uh, Delicatessen. And uh, the uh, Delicatessen and Seabell's Children are absolutely stunning movies. Uh, visually just uh, extraordinary, if you haven't seen them. Um, Ron Perlman is uh, in, in the Yeah, City of Lost Children is, is just, it's a, a feast. I mean, I mean, I don't like to use that word, but that's what it is. Um, uh, it's, it's hard to explain. It's basically like this guy can't dream, so he starts kidnapping children and stealing their dreams. Um, uh, and um, he's, you know, the circus performer played by um, Ron Perlman helps out this little girl to go try to kidnap, re, uh, uh, unkidnap her brother who's been kidnapped by this oh, okay. this monster who's stealing oh, all the children. Okay. It's fantastical and absurd, and it's gorgeous and it's weird and it's just like clo- close ups on faces of every strange thing that you can imagine. And so when I heard that he was being given a hundred million dollars and he was getting the same director of photography who you, who shot Sea of Lost Children, who shot Seven. Uh, Darius Kanji oh, to wow. shoot Alien Resurrection. I thought, well, this is going to look great. It's going to be weird. And all that happened is he put Ron Perlman in it and he put the guy from Delicatessen and City of Lost Children in it. And <laughs> it was interesting in it at all. Um, and I think that was the most disappointed I've ever been in a movie at the time in terms of my anticipation. And uh, th- I, think I, I think I stopped anticipating movies after that, honestly, because it was like, I can never yeah. be never feel as rejected as I feel here. And I didn't hate Alien 3. Um, I've never really hated it. I know a lot of people do. I think it, I think it works okay in the longer cut. But um, I like Alien 3. I didn't mind it. Um, Peter Berg. Yeah, how do you hate anything with Peter Berg? <laughs> Peter Berg? Is he not Alien 3? No. No. Oh. You, uh, um, what Alien am I 3. Of it? Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Who am I, I thinking of? I don't know. I mean, I Peter Berg's an actor. Yeah. Is he not in Alien 3? Who's no, the guy I'm thinking of? He just died recently. Pete Postlethwaite. Oh, that might be it. The, 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 the guy who was in what one of those Jurassic Park ones, and he's also Kobayashi in Usual Suspects. 
Oh shit! Oh that no, guy. that's not the guy I'm thinking of. Uh, is he dead too? 